A lot of people over the last year or so have asked me how I capture and format my video for YouTube. I've had plans for a long time for a series of videos that could cover all of the bases for capturing and even editing video, but a series like that would be tons of work and I've never gotten it done as a result. So rather than try and relay information that would cover a broad spectrum of capture devices and video editing software over the course of many videos, I'm going to run you through the basic sequence of events I go through when I capture video. Given how long this video is, it may sound like a lot of complicated stuff, but that's only because I stop and explain why I do things this way. Okay, to start, let's talk about the most important aspect, hardware. This is my EasyCap. It cost me about $12. It captures at a maximum resolution of 640 by 480 and a maximum frame rate of 30 frames per second. It's got some quirks to it, but the biggest shortcoming over more expensive capture hardware is probably the frame rate. 30 frames per second is fine for watching TV, but when you want to start capturing footage of video games, it may be a problem. Though, given that most video upload services like YouTube cap their frame rates at 30 frames per second, this limitation probably isn't a very big deal for most people. The type of cables the EasyCap uses are standard yellow, red, white composite cables, as well as one connector for S-Video. The S-Video cable is extremely important. As you can see by these comparison shots, S-Video provides a major boost in video quality over the standard yellow composite connector. It's not high definition, but it's about as clear as standard definition video can get. A word of warning though. Though S-Video is fine with modern consoles, older gaming hardware, like the original PlayStation, was not designed to be displayed using S-Video. For those older consoles, it's best to use regular yellow composite cable for video. Okay, now that we've got our EasyCap all set up, let's talk about the process of actually capturing video. On the software end of things, four programs are key for me. Dscaler 4, Virtual Audio Cable, Virtual Dub, and a video codec called Huffy UV, or Huffy of, whatever. Dscaler is the software that grabs video from the EasyCap and displays it on our screen. Virtual audio cable compensates for one of the quirks of the EasyCap, which is that you cannot hear live audio from the device. Videos recorded using the EasyCap will have sound in them, but unless you use virtual audio cable, you won't hear it until after you play back your recording. Virtual Dub is a piece of free video editing software, and we'll be using it to process the raw footage we capture. Finally, Huffy UV is a video codec specifically designed for capturing video from this kind of stuff and it ensures that your recordings are smooth and of very high quality. Once you're plugged in and your capture device is ready to go, what I do first is open Virtual Audio Cable's audio repeater. If you get sound from your capture device normally, you don't need to bother with this step. Wave in is your source, and wave out is what you want to send the audio to. My EasyCap identifies itself just as USB audio interface, so that's our wave in. And wave out is my sound card, the Realtek HD. Before hitting the start button, it's a good idea to futz around with the buffer settings. Leaving these settings too high or too low can cause audio lag. I generally set my total buffer to around 100 and my buffers to 20. This gives good quality without much delay. With virtual audio cable setup, it's time to hit the start button. You won't hear sound just yet. The EasyCap only starts out putting audio once it detects video. If you haven't set up Dscaler to use the Huffy UV codec, now's a good time to do it. Go to Actions, Recording, and then Options. Under Compression Options, simply tell it to use Huffy UV. You also want to set it for full height interlaced recordings, but we'll get into interlacing later. You can set up other options here if you want, like where to output your video file, what restrictions on file size you want, and so on. While we're fooling around with stuff like this, go to Settings and then Advanced Settings. Under Decoding and Output Settings, make sure Hurry When Late is enabled. If for whatever reason the recording lags a little bit, this will force the video stream to catch up to the audio so the capture stays synchronized. Once we've done all that, select the EasyCap from Dscaler's Sources menu. Mine shows up as a Syntec 1160, but I've heard of other EasyCaps identifying as Sabrent hardware. After selecting it, you should see your image appear. Now there's one final thing we need to set up before we're ready to start recording, and that's how you want to handle interlacing. Interlacing is a technique used to display standard definition video. Without getting too technical in the hows and whys of interlacing, instead I'll just show you. This is an interlaced video, and this is the same video without interlacing. 
If interlacing bothers you just as much as it bothers me, the most effective way to get rid of it in Descaler is to go to the interlacing menu and select Even Scan Lines Only. There are many other settings for deinterlacing video here, but my EasyCap interlaces video in an odd way, so the only option that works for me is Even Scan Lines Only. Feel free to play around with things until you find an option that looks good for you. It's also important to note that most of these options don't actually affect the recorded video, only how you see it here in the Descaler window. Now we can finally begin capturing video. Simply go back to the Actions menu and start recording, or hit Shift and R. If the video is in widescreen, go up to Aspect Ratio and select 16x9 Anamorphic, otherwise leave it at 4x3. While you're recording, also keep in mind that while Huffy UV does a little bit of compression, it doesn't do much. A minute of video will run you about 600 megabytes. That's roughly 10 megabytes per second. It's a good idea to figure at least 2 gigabytes minimum for a video. Once you've got your video recorded, you can stop it from the same menu you started recording from, or simply hit Shift in S. Since the EasyCap is really slow at exiting, Trying to close Descaler normally will usually result in a device timeout error, followed by Descaler freezing up. So, generally, when I want to close Descaler, I just open the Task Manager and terminate the process. So now that we have a video file, it's time to open it in VirtualDub. So here we are in VirtualDub with an interlaced widescreen video. You'll notice that even though the video is in widescreen, it's still recorded in 640x480. Before we deal with that, though, we need to deinterlace the video. For that, we'll need a couple of plugins, or filters, for Virtual Dub. The first one is the Reverse Field Dominance Filter by Donald Graft, which is needed for the weird way that the EasyCap interlaces its footage. The second one is Gunnar Thalen's Area Based Deinterlacing Filter. Once those are installed and ready to go, apply them by going to Video and then Filters. Make sure that you add the Reverse Field Dominance first, and uncheck Blend instead of Interpolate in the Deinterlacing Filter. It'll give you a clearer image. By now, the video should be looking less like a garbled mess of interlacing lines and more like a video game, which means there's one last thing to do. Resize the widescreen video so that it's actually widescreen. Open the Filters menu again and add the Resize filter. Disable the Aspect Ratio and then resize the video to be 848 wide and 480 tall, which stretches our 640x480 video to a more appropriate widescreen resolution. And that's it! What you do with the video from here is up to you. Generally speaking, it's a good idea to recompress the video and save it somewhere for upload to YouTube. YouTube works best with MPEG-4 codecs, so your best bet is to compress your video with DivX, XVID, or my personal codec of choice, H.264. You could also choose to just re-encode it with Huffy UV again if you want to import your processed video into another editing program like Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere. So to recap, there are five easy steps I take to capture video. Number one, I open Virtual Audio Cable. Number two, I open Descaler. Number three, I capture my video. Number four, I open Virtual Dub. Number five, I apply filters and process my video in Virtual Dub. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps some of you out there.